You might be wondering what the heck this is on the screen, all these cameras around a baseball field. Uh, this is from technology.mlblogs.com. And what we're looking at here is essentially what you may or may not know as StatCast. Um, StatCast is something that has been around in MLB since 2015, and it's basically a bunch of cameras around the field that allow things, every event to be tracked. So we're able to get just a ton of data about everything that happens on a baseball field. These cameras are the most... Uh, recent and newest iteration of StatCast, which is a Hawkeye tracking system. It's the same thing used in tennis, if you've ever, I don't really watch a lot of tennis, but I, I do know that they have, you know, and they can look at replays to look where a ball landed in or out. So th this is the same technology used for that. And you can see there are cameras all over the field, some track players, some track pitch to plate. But essentially what we're left with is, man, it's great to be a baseball fan in 2020 with all this information at our fingertips uh, that you know, six you know, six or more years ago was just not available to us, and it's given a whole new way to study the game and to kind of evaluate: is a player good? Is a player lucky? What's causing the success? And so, really, with this, you could make a seven-hour video diving into Sackhead stuff. So I'm going to try to keep it shorter than seven hours, and I'm just I'm going to concentrate on some basic hitting stats or you know ways you can use StatCast to evaluate hitters. Pitching is a whole different ballgame and uh, I'm not going to go into the weeds too much on hitting either. I'm just going to try to give a basic overview. So to start, uh, let's go to fan graphs and look at things that we used before StatCast. So here we've got, of course, Manny Machado's page up and I'm going to talk to you about something first called BABIP, which is batting average on balls in play. So it takes out home runs, strikeouts, and walks out of the equation and tells us what a player's batting average is on balls that they put in play. And generally, the league average for BABIP is around 300. So, you know, in 2017, Manny Machado's BABIP was 265. You might be able to say, oh, he was a little unlucky that year. Or 322 in 2013. Oh, he was a little lucky that year. In small samples, sometimes, you know, you'll see a guy through like two months and his BABIP is like 420 or something, you know, and it's just like obviously that isn't going to last. Uh, and But you also, I say 300 is a good baseline for the league to look at for hitters, but you also want to look at a player's career BABIP because some players will have higher BABIPs or lower BABIPs over time. And if we look at Machado's here, he's had about 5,000 plate appearances as a major league player, and his BABIP is actually 298. So he's right around that 300 average. So we can use that 300 as a baseline for him. So this is still a useful way to measure if a player is lucky or unlucky, but the StatCast stuff is going to be able to add layers on top of this. Uh, another thing that uh, is helpful on the Fangraphs page here is batted ball information. And they do have the StatCast information somewhere else on this page, but I'm going to go to a different website to show you that. And we used to look at a lot of you know line drive, ground balls, and fly balls to figure out uh, if a player, what kind of contact a player was making. And again, this is still stuff that is useful. You can look at a player, you know, line drives are really good <laughs> uh, because they go for hits more often than ground balls, obviously. Fly balls, to an extent, also good, but sometimes you can get pop-ups, uh, you know, you can get under it too much. So, and there's also something called a uh, home run to fly ball rate, which measures uh, how fortunate a player has gotten on his fly balls and might be able to tell you something about how hard of contact a player is making on fly balls. But you don't necessarily need to remember any of this or memorize any of this. I'm just trying to give a background on where baseball was before StatCast. And some of this stuff still plays in and is still helpful, uh, but the staff cast, the stat cast data is going to be much more informative. So let's go on over to Machado's page. This is on Baseball Savant, which is where all the stat cast data is store, stored on MLB.com. And we go to his stat cast page. And the thing that's really neat about this is it tells you where he ranks in all these stats, which I'll get into what some of these mean in a second. But remember on my uh, last tutorial video about how to evaluate hitters using stats, I was talking about how something like slugging percentage, what a good slugging percentage is, can change over time. This, that's what really nice about this percentile rankings. You can be like, okay, hard hit percentage, uh, you know, 
is he good at it? Well, yeah, he's in the 74th percentile. So whatever his hard hit percentage is, which is down further on the page, or whatever his exit velocity is, which is again down further on the page, he's in this percentile on it. So his, you know, his ex woba is awesome. Whiff percentage, good. So this is really nice in that you don't necessarily have to know what the baseline is to know if a player is good or not. You can look at this percentile rankings. It's just a really handy way to see an overview of a player. So I'm going to get into what some of these mean. So we can start with exit velocity, which is just how hard a player hits the ball on the average ball that they put into play. Uh, in general, balls that are hit harder, that's better. Um, you know, obviously there's some nuance to that, but exit velocity is important because it tells us how hard a player hits the ball. Hard hit percentage is, and I'm going to pull up the definition here on Baseball Savant, is basically any ball hit 95 miles per hour or greater is considered a hard hit ball. And that's where this hard hit percentage comes for comes from. And the reason that we like 95 miles per hour so much is because that's when re results really start to take off. This is the uh, WOBA the, that we talked about in the last video, weighted on base average, based off of a ball's exit velocity. So you can see if you're hitting the ball, I don't know, 65 miles an hour or 88 miles an hour, there's not much of a difference in outcome. But if you're hitting the ball 98 miles per hour instead of 88, uh, we're in business, stuff is happening. So you can see that 95% threshold of a hard hit ball is really important. And here it gives you the outcomes. In 2018, a 524 average, a 1047 slugging, and a 653 WOBA on balls 95 miles per hour or harder. Uh, 94 or lower, 219 batting average, 259 slugging, and a 206 WOBA. So obviously there's a varying degree of success there as you get as you get lower down to around 50 miles an hour. But for the most part, man, this is pretty steady from like 90 on down to like 62. You're not gonna get a lot of success in a large sample of balls hit under 95 miles per hour. So that's what the hard hit percentage is. Um, next, I am gonna, let's go back to Machado's page. And here we've got barrel percentage. I would suggest that barrel percentage is an even better thing to look at than exit velocity or hard hit percentage because it tends to encompass a lot of what those things, uh, what exit velocity or hard hit percentage can tell us. And barrel percentage, it's a, don't let your eyes glaze over here on the definition. I promise it's not too complicated. But basically, a, it, so a ball traveling 90, let's just start with this example, right? A ball traveling 99 miles per hour earns barreled when struck between a 25 to 31 degree angle. So what that's telling us is a barrel has to do with not actually where it hit on the barrel of the bat, right? Don't get caught up on that. It has to do with exit velocity combined with the launch angle, which makes sense, right? A ball hit at 100 miles an hour but into the ground is not nearly as good at a ball hit at 100 miles an hour but at a 26 degree angle. So. Here it, it tells us a ball needs to be at least 98 miles per hour to be a barrel, right? And a ball at 98 miles per hour needs to hit, be hit at a launch angle between 26 to 30 degrees. And that launch angle, as you hit the ball harder, the launch angle widens. So uh, like we said, if, if a ball is 100 miles per hour, the range grows to a 24 to 33 degree launch angle. So again, don't get too caught up in the math or let your eyes glaze over too much. Just know that a barrel is a ball hit 98 miles per hour or harder and at angles that are favorable to hits, generally line drives, uh, fly balls that aren't pop-ups. And so why is this good? Well, <laughs> The barrel has produced a batting mark and slug percentage significantly higher than 500 and 1500. That's good. So during the 2016 regular season, balls that were barreled had a batting average of 822 and a slugging percentage of 2386. So yeah, man, like you wanna barrel the ball. And now most guys don't barrel more, you know, if you're over 10%, that's pretty good if your ball is in play. So you don't barrel up a lot, but that's why barrels is important because Man, like it's almost like a guaranteed hit if you barrel it up. 82 times, you know, 822 times out of a thousand, you're going to have a hit and you're going to average uh, more than two bases per uh, barrel in play.
So that's why barrel percentage is important. And so I'm going to scroll down a little bit here, and when you get it into, remember we we're talking about BABIP and line drive percentage, ground ball percentage, all that, and how that can play into measuring if a player or assessing if a player is lucky. The StatCast data gives us an amazing tool to look at luck here. We've got WOBA, which again, we covered in the last video, and expected WOBA. What expected WOBA is, is it takes the batted ball profile of all the players' balls in play. So, you know, it takes the exit velocity and the launch angle, and it tells us what we would expect that player's results to be based off of all those balls that they've hit. So it'll tell us, okay, expected WOBA for Manny Machado in, let's go to 2020, was 368. His actual WOBA was 385. So he got a little luckier on balls in play, uh, well, at, or balls, batted balls, than perhaps his launch angle and exit velocity tells us. Now this isn't egregious, 385 to 368 is reasonable, but you might run into guys with, especially in smaller samples, with a WOBA of like, I don't know, 450 and an expo both like 320 it's like okay well that guy is coming back down to earth soon his results uh and his woba are far outpacing what he deserves based off of what his ex woba says so compare woba to ex woba to get a good feel for if a player is lucky unlucky uh just really good or you know good and lucky good and unlucky etc um so generally if the ex woba is lower than the woba then that player, well, I said that backwards. Let me back that up. So if you have a WOBA that is higher than your ex-WOBA, that player is probably a little luckier than they should be. Whereas if a player's WOBA is lower than their ex-WOBA, then that player is, has been unlucky. All right? I think I said that right. That was a little bit of a tongue twister. I didn't, I didn't practice that one beforehand. Uh, so again, like I said, I don't want to give you too much information and too much math in this video, but I do want to provide a little context on a few players. Uh, let's go ahead to Teoscar Hernandez's profile page, and you can see Teoscar Hernandez absolutely crushes the ball. 98th percentile in exit velocity, 96th in hard hit percentage, 98th in barrel percentage. Looks like he should be the best player in baseball, right? And he was really good last year. But his whiff percentage, 8th eight, percentile. So, you know, he whiffs more than 92% of, uh, of major league hitters. And by whiff, that doesn't mean a strikeout. It just means a swing and a miss. He doesn't walk, 24th percentile. He strikes out, well, because he whiffs, uh, more than 88% of times, more than 88% of major league hitters. So that's one thing you want to look at is, sure, a guy can crush the ball, but does he put the ball in play enough to for that to matter? For Teoscar Hernandez, uh, last year he did, you know, but it, it's to be determined how his career kind of goes. He's 28 at this point, and he's had this great stat cast data, and last year he finally became a monster at the plate. But with all this swing and miss, I don't know how long that ceiling is going to last for him. We'll see. So one other interesting example, and then we'll finish up here, is Josh Bell. Josh Bell was a total monster the first half of 2019 in Major League Baseball. Had, like, historic two- to three-month run and ended up with a really solid 2019 season. Hold, please. And so, but in 2020, not nearly as good a results. And his exit velocity was still great, 87th percentile. A very nice 69th percentile in hard hit percentage barrel, 55th percentile. Eh, we can work with that. But you can see his X woba, his slug X slugging percentage, his X expected batting average, all bad. So what the heck happened? This is a simplified. Uh, I would be happy to dig into this more and give a more nuanced uh, analysis of Josh Bell. Uh, but I don't want this video to go on forever. But essentially, we're going to go down here and man, look at this nonsense. So. His ground ball percentage in 2019 as a monster was 44%. 44% of the balls that he hit were on the ground. In 2020, 56%. So, you know, that's why, I mean, it's a very simplified uh, explanation, but that's why Josh Bell sucked in 2020, because he hit everything into the ground. The balls that were in the air in 2019, they were into the ground in 2020. The league adjusted to Josh Bell. And even though he still hit the ball just as hard when he hit it, 
he wasn't he was his launch angle wasn't good remember we talked about launch angle being an important uh aspect of barrel uh percentage he had his launch angle was terrible and again that's something we can get into the weeds more and more on that uh but i won't you know i don't want to jump into all that too much uh and put too much information in this video but that's a kind of quick overview of StatCast and the type of batted ball data that we can get to evaluate players and how to evaluate them. I hope that's helpful if you have questions about it or you'd like me to take a deeper dive on certain stuff because this is just very general. Uh, just, just let me know, but that, that's all for, uh, for now.